what we've learned from discussions about simpler commands is that it's not the weakest precondition that's interesting, it's how we can use the weakest precondition to prove a command correct. So what we're going to do now is we're going to again discuss the if command, but now we're going to discuss how to determine if a code segment that includes an if command is correct. Let's have a look. What did we do previously? Well, we had a prototypical if command, and what we said was if we know that R has to be true after the command is finished, then if any of the guarded commands is executed, R must be true after that command. And then we said, but that means that the weakest precondition has to be true before the command is executed. And that then allowed us to discuss what the weakest precondition of the if command was. What we're going to do is we're going to annotate our if command differently. It's still the case that after any guarded statement or command is executed, R must be true. But now we're going to say, look, if Q is true before the if command, and if we know that G0 is true, then immediately after that, and before statement S0 is executed, Q and G0 must be true. And therefore, the Hoare triple Q and G0, S0, R must hold if this is to be a correct code segment within the if command. And the same thing, of course, is true for the guarded statement with G1 through GK minus 1. And what does that mean? Well, we can go down the checklist instead. It has to be the case that Q implies that one of the guards is true. But then, each of these Hoare triples must be true. The Hoare triple itself holds if and only if Q and G0 implies the weakest precondition of S0 leaving you in a state where R is true. So each of the individual Hoare triples we can check by checking whether this implication holds. What does that mean? Well, it justifies what we call the if theorem. Consider here again our prototypical if command. This if command is correct if and only if Q implies that one of the guards is true and for each of the guarded commands Q and the guard for that command implies the weakest precondition of that command leaving you in a state where R holds. And that's known as the if theorem. And you can simply think of this as a checklist that you have to go through in order to check that a code segment that includes an if command holds. So here is our example again where we set z equal to the absolute value of x, except that I stated the post condition slightly differently. I stated it as x is greater than 0 and z is equal to x when we're done, or x less than or equal to 0 and z is equal to minus x. This is actually the way Maggie prefers stating the post condition for computing the absolute value. So let's have a look. What do we need to check? We need to check that Q implies G0 or G1. We need to check that Q and G0 implies the weakest precondition as 0R. And we need to check that Q and G1 implies the weakest precondition as 1R. Check the first one. That's a matter of instantiating. We can apply uh, implication simplification to get rid of the true on the left of the implication, and then we can apply algebra to conclude that this is true. Now we look at Q and G0 having to imply the weakest precondition as 0R. So we instantiate. Then we know how to compute the weakest precondition of simple assignment. That's a matter of inserting x for every occurrence of z, and you get this. And then it's a matter of working through this. What do we know? x equals x is true. And we also know that x equals minus x means that x has to be equal to 0. And then we could do and simplification to get rid of the and true. And we can uh, do some algebra to conclude that in the second uh, disjunction, x must be equal to 0 and then we can apply weakening strengthening to conclude that the result is true. So obviously proving that Q and G1 implies the weakest precondition as 1R follows very similarly. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this as a homework and I will see you in the next video.